Well, I'm representing Ronnie Chang, um, who was um, one of the originators um, and the president of a couple of, of medical marijuana um, collectives, um, one of which was in Wildemar, California, um, in Riverside County, and the other of which was in San Marcos. This case, um, we think, um, is retaliatory and has been from the outset. Um, that he was picked out by the Narcotics Task Force um, at the behest of DEA um, to shut him down because of his having had the temerity um, to reopen um, his San Marcos shop um, after it was raided, um, under, or uh, immediately prior to its being raided, I should say, um, after San Marcos had shut down the previous collective on that spot, um, he um, reopened under a different name um, with the uh, assistance um, of Jeff Lake, a lawyer who put them together, um, and um, he was um, at all times trying to comply with state law because he was under the understanding by virtue of what the Obama administration had said earlier that if he was in compliance with state law that he wouldn't have to worry about the feds. Um, that, as we all know, turned out to, um, to be uh, fantasy land um, when the feds turned around and announced that they were going after even those who were in compliance with, with state law um, and that their status, even if they were um, fully compliant um, and uh, uh, touched all the bases that were required to operate a lawful collective or cooperative under state law, um, were fulfilled. And that's what, what Mr. Chang did. Um, he um, had a uh, number with the, uh, with the uh, Board of Equalization. Um, he got all of the necessary documents um, to, um, that is zoning documents, until um, they, he was shut down by San Marcos. Um, he um, collected the taxes and paid them over to the Board of Equalization. Um, it was a not-for-profit um, entity. He was not the owner, as, as the government likes to say, um, but rather was um, the president um, of the nonprofit, both the, both of the nonprofits, the Wildemar uh, um, Collective, as well as um, the one in San Marcos. How long has Mr. Chang been in custody? Well, uh, it's, it's sort of been on the installment plan. Uh, he was in custody from from September of um, 2011 um, to, and then we were able to get him out um, in December of, um, of that year. Um, and then we've been litigating this case. That was when the indictment came down. Um, we've been litigating this case ever since with motions to suppress wiretaps. Um, as well as motions to dismiss based upon various theories. Um, and however, um, in I believe it was April of, the, of 2012, um, it was, the bail bondsman um, revoked his bond because Mr. Chang was unable to make an installment payment on the bond which um, the King Stallman had written for him. And because he was in breach of that agreement, um, the bondsman rearrested him and put him in um, and returned him to custody. He's been unable to um, to make bail ever since that time. Um, the, the amount of the bail was reduced by um, our judge, Judge Anello, from $200,000 to $100,000, either fully secured or a corporate surety bond. Um, but since he doesn't have sufficient equity in property or any collateral at this point in time, um, he has been unable to post bond of any sort whatsoever. He would like the support of those um, who believe, as he does, um, that the, the um, qualified patients of the state of California have the right um, to access um, to the medicine which they need, um, and that um, he is being um, singled out as a scapegoat in order, as I have said, to intimidate others um, into um, not following in his footsteps um, and he would like the support of all those um, who believe as he does um, that this is a basic intrusion upon the sovereignty of the state of California um, by 
basically forcing them to comply um, with the law um, as dictated to them by the federal government. Um, the case began way back in 2009 um, when the city of San Marcos um, took action against um, the collective which was at that time called MMSC um, and that was uh, they were shut down by the city of San Marcos in June of 2009 um, and then um, in September of 2009 um, his two collectives um, were um, to, well that one was one of 13 collectives which were raided by the, the narcotics task force um, but uh, um, his was the only one in which charges were ultimately filed um, in the state court originally um, and uh, that occurred in, in um, April of 2010. It took him a while to get around to filing charges. Um, and the strange thing about the, this case was that um, the people it was prosecute, being prosecuted in state court downtown, um, which was unusual to begin with since this occurred um, in the North County. Um, and every time um, they tried to get the case moving well it was continued at the request of the people um, for one reason or another um, and ultimately uh, the case dragged on um, until um, September um, of 2012 when the feds were ready to come against them they dismissed the state case um, and filed these charges in federal court um, amounting to about 65 counts um, most of which were money laundering counts, um, which is um, absurd. The problem with a, with a collective and a cooperative is that the banks won't allow you to open a bank account, um, and so your choice is to put the, put the money in your name um, or, um, do some, or hide it under the mattress, um, and he certainly wasn't going to do the second one. Um, so he was depositing the money into his mother's account so, so that it would be safeguarded and um, for the benefit of the collective and of course the government thinks that that was money laundering um, uh, and added those counts. They've also charged him with, as well as his co-defendants, with conspiracy to, uh, to manufacture, that's fed speak for grow or cultivate marijuana, um, 100 plants or more, I think about 600 plants were found altogether. Uh, that included the member growers um, who were growing for the collective. There were five or six of them, and they pooled all of the marijuana to come up with a more than 100 plant um, uh, threshold um, to make it a five-year minimum mandatory. Then they threw in possession with intent to distribute more than 100 kilos, conspiracy um, to distribute marijuana to individuals under the age of 18, uh, because their uh, theory being that since you can get a card at age 18, um, then they conspired to d distribute marijuana to minors. Um, and uh, then um, these, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't give you the exact number. Well, I could if I pulled out the indictment. But in any event, we're talking about 64, 65 counts, um, the, about the vast majority of which are these manufactured um, uh, money laundering counts. 65 counts or 64 counts, is that normal for a case like this or is this trumped up? No, it's, it's overkill. It's overkill. Um, and I think that I, I, I think that the sheer number of counts which they filed is supposed to designed to intimidate us into folding up, um, but you know, uh, whether they have 65 counts or 600 counts, um, well, we're talking about the same situation. If this case had gone to state court, um, would this have even gone to trial? And if it had, would he would 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 he win? Yeah. So if that case um, had hung around long enough, um, they um, the the people would not have been able to get the case to the jury because there would have been insufficient evidence as a matter of law. Do you think that knowing that they would lose in state court, is that why they sent it to the Fed side? No, I, I think that this was a setup from the, the, from the, from the get-go, um, that the Feds wanted to let their wiretap run its course, 
um, and um, to um, get uh, the identities of all of those um, who were participants in forming um, and in running the, co the um, collectives, um, and that they just wanted to keep Mr. Um, Chang on ice until they were ready to spring their indictment, um, which is exactly what they did. We believe that this particular case um, is, is politically motivated um, and was um, designed to strike fear into the hearts of anyone else um, who would have the audacity to open um, a dispensary, be, be it in the form of a collective or a cooperative, even one in full compliance with state law, um, and to show them what's going to happen to them um, by the federal government in the event that they continue to resist. Um, we would obviously like as much support um, from as many people as we could, as we can get, um, to um, assist us in trying to turn back this latest attempt at squashing the rights of patients and their, and their lawful providers, um, and as well as um, trying to eliminate the collectives and cooperatives, um, even those which are in full compliance, such as the one um, uh, operated by Mr. Chang and his co-defendants. In addition to supporting him or showing up to court, what else can people out there do uh, that want to help or support this case? Well, um, Mr. Chang is, is in dire financial straits at this particular point in time. We're not asking for contributions for his defense fund, um, but um, he is the sole caregiver of his 85-year-old mother, um, and um, she's living by herself now, and um, he has been unable to provide for her. Um, I understand after talking to her today that she's about to be evicted from her latest place of residence and the landlord has gone so far as, as to cut off the water and she was gathering rainwater today um, to, to use um, because of that circumstance.